Greetings and welcome back to a Southwell Academic. We got a reaction video, hip hop's biggest secret, another video. Now entering the fray is Khalil Omani, brother Khalil Omani. Amani, Amani, want to say it correct. Khalil Amani. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video. I said I was gonna take, I was gonna stop with the videos. But the reason why I'm doing this is because, because Ronald Savage, if you don't know by now, please check my playlist, Hip Hop's Biggest Secret. Because Ronald Savage made a 180, it forced everybody to make a 180 or it forced most people to rethink about Ronald Savage. Really the first victim to come out and tell his story about Africa, Bam Bara. Now this video I'm about to play came out July 30th, 2021. Brother Khalil Amani, I remember this video. He decided to defend Ronald B. Stinger Savage when the internet was coming at him. And I have to admit, Star was part of the problem. Hassan Campbell, the other victim that came out, did cause part of the problem. So, it created this atmosphere. This created this atmosphere, this shitstorm, if you will, of people coming at Ronald Savage. So, at the time, Brother Khalil Amani came out with this video, very powerful video. I was captivated by this video from beginning to end. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'm going to play large chunks of it to show July 30th, 2021, how things can change. How things can change in a year. Shit was all good just a week ago, right? So Khalil Amani, he put himself out there he put himself out there as the front line of defense for Ronald B. Stinger Savage. And the reason why I'm reacting to this is because I'm going through the crates. I'm digging through the crates. I'm going through all the interviews, all the everything that manifested to this point of African Bimbada. Government named Lance Taylor versus John Doe. The Child Victim Act. But now we have this new saga. A new villain has appeared. And this villain has an origin story like no other. This villain is Ronald B. Stinger Savage. The first victim to come out against African Bambada. He has joined the dark side. If you will. So. I'm going to play this video. It's a very powerful video, and I want to show people the climate and the time that we were at in terms of everything going on. Because like I said, it's been a crazy journey with everybody that's been involved. I won't say all the people that gave their platforms, but some of the people that gave their platforms was also involved in this mess. It was a free for all. Everybody was fighting with everybody and nobody paid attention to African Bambaro. And in a way, he slipped through the cracks and maneuvered around while everybody else was arguing with everybody else. So this video came at a time I felt was necessary because all the infighting, the back and forth, the spinning of the narrative 
I'm just going to play this video and let Camille Amani speak for himself. Let's go. Bearing his soul, admitting to the world that African Bambada made him suck cock. Did you hear that? Let me play that again. World that bearing his soul, admitting to the world that African Bambada made him suck cock. I'm going to play it one more time. To some people, you might be disgusted. To other people, this might be funny. But this wasn't no joke. Let me play that one more time. Let me play it one more time. Powerful intro. Bearing his soul, admitting to the world that African Bambada made him suck cock. My God. Don't you people have any? I said the man has been through enough, y'all. We trying to hold, we trying to hold his feet to the fire like Ronald owes us something. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? Who the fuck are we? What does this man owe you? He never said he was going to take African Mabada to court. And the reality of the matter is, this is a personal matter. This is not a three ring circus. This is a very personal, private, painful issue that he shared with you and I. And here we are trying to hold his feet to the fire. Ronald Savage was an advocate Speaking out on allhiphop.com. What more do you want of the man? The man went to Harlem with Sonetta and was at the rally and lent his voice to this Bambada debacle. What more do you want of the man? The man wrote a book, not for monetary purposes, as some of you fuck niggas are trying to paint the narrative. He wrote the book because when he was taking therapy for the things he has been through in life, he casually said to his psychologist, damn, I should write a book. And she said, you should write a book because writing is therapeutic. I know that because I'm a writer. Writing is cathartic. I know that because I'm a writer. And when you start writing down your feelings and introspections, next thing you know, he had enough for a book. He didn't write a book just to try to make money off of a terrible situation. Y'all are painting the false narrative of Ronald Savage. This book is the result of getting therapy for his emotional and physical and sexual abuse. I said, this book is the culmination of the therapy sessions he had in which his therapist advised him to write a book, to write down his feelings. When you superficial motherfuckers come along and say he was trying to get money, he took a bag. So um, in terms of Ronald Garrett getting therapy, this is not no diss to Hassan, but I think that I think it's interesting that Ronald got his therapy. I don't know if Hassan got his therapy. Um, I don't know if he would share that, but it's interesting because I always thought Hassan needed something, someone to talk to, to get that healing. Because ultimately, I know people are going to say a lot of things about Hassan. I think he needs the healing. I think being, being in the public eye, in the spotlight for far too long, I won't say it hindered his healing, but I think that missing therapy, and I'm being serious. I'm not being trying to diss or nothing. I think that missing piece was needed, but it's interesting when we look at Ronald Savage, he got his therapy, but look how he turned out anyways as well too. So I'm not saying this to say that therapy doesn't help. I'm saying that there's something deeper going on with Ronald that has gone beyond therapy. I still think anybody, any victim, I'm not even gonna say any names, any victim, whether 
boy or girl that happened at the time, young teenager, I think would definitely benefit with therapy, despite what had happened, the decisions that Ronald B. Stinger Savage made. Let's go. Ronald Savage was on Radio Power 105 in New York City, telling his story of abuse. What more do you want from the man? The narrative that y'all are painting is bullshit. He did what he was supposed to do. Put the Bambada conversation in the national hip hop arena. He did that. The man was in New York City Daily News. What more do you want? But y'all saying he abandoned the fight. Y'all say y'all want to hold his feet to the fire. Y'all say a man damn near 60 years old is supposed to still have the energy to want to do a court battle. Some shit you ain't never done. Yeah. This is a man who's been through some shit, y'all. But we come on YouTube and we think that he owes us something. A man who's been violated and molested by a man, another man. We think that he owes us something. Like we somebody. We got it all fucked up. Yeah. We got it fucked up. The man can't even move on with his life and create something called the hip-hop movement without niggas like Star judging him and saying shit like, What's he doing? The guy's 50 years old. He, he's, he's 50 years old. What the fuck is he doing? Start, listen up, fuck nigga. You don't run niggas. You don't run nobody. You ain't got no wife and you ain't got no kids. You don't run shit over here. Let so this is fierce defense of Ronald Savage. Listen, fierce defense. Hey, Ronald started hip hop movement. Um, I think this was an attempt to enjoy hip hop the way that he should have abuse free so i feel for him with this hip hop movement this whole idea that you could be too old to do hip hop i mean star i'm not even going to get into star's age but we could see at the time the passion that brother kilil omani had to defend Ronald Savage in all aspects. Let the man go. live out whatever days he has left, doing whatever he wants to do to make him happy. Who are we? Exactly. Who are we that we have to, you're trying to guide and direct his steps, and he can't do hip hop because he's 55, 56 years old. The man was on Doggy Diamonds, y'all. Shout out to Doggy Diamonds. He's pretty much one of the only independent, independent platforms that did not become part of the mess. He did the story, then pretty much moved on. But shout out to Doggy Diamonds. Big platforms telling us about the abuse that he encountered with Bambada. What more do you want from the man? Y'all are so hell-bent on this little law, the Child Victims Act. Well, he helped bring it to fruition. What more do you want from the man? Can you say... That Hassan Campbell did anything in this fight against child abuse and sexual child abuse and pedophilia? Hassan ain't done a goddamn thing. How are we even trying to hold this man on the same playing field as we do Hassan, who has done nothing? But here is Ronald Savage standing next to the advocates in Albany, New York, the capital, co-signing and lending his voice, his face, his presence to the Child Victims Act. Yeah, at the time uh, it appeared that Ronald Savage, he was doing the work. He's doing heavy work. Heavy work. And you fuck niggas out here talking about he abandoned the fight. He abandoned. How many of you have done anything that, that, that remotely comes close to changing a fucking law in your state or your city or your country? But you say he abandoned ship. Ronald Savage is meeting with the movers and shakers, the lawmakers. No, no, no. Ronald Savage, he did not create the Child Victims Act. No one ever said he did. The Child Victims Act is an ongoing process before Ronald got involved. But when he found out about the Child Victims Act, he got involved. He took his ass to Albany. He put his face on camera, put his name on the record that he stands with the, with the, the abused. And all you fuck niggas can say is he abandoned the fight and he got ghost. Your narrative is fucked up. How many of you? have lent your name to a cause, a worthy cause, that can change the lives of people, especially children. But you can judge Ronald. 
because he's not all on YouTube every day like Hassan Campbell. You say he ain't in the fight because you don't see his face. As though YouTube is the only medium whereby you can get your message across. Ronald Savage was quietly going to Albany, to the capital of New York, and lending his voice when you fuck niggas like Hassan were just talking shit on YouTube. See, that's another thing. Um, I want to just make this point because we know how Ronald turned out anyways. I think that more people need to focus on real life activism, underground activism. YouTube's okay, but it's um it's always good to do work outside of YouTube and not for YouTube. Um for me anyways, I think it's definitely a great thing. Like I don't use I use social media as a tool to help get my goals accomplished in terms of as activism, education, activism, if you will. But I'm always ready, looking to make moves in the real world as well, too. He was serious about it. But all you could talk about is the fact that he chose not to take that final step and get a lawyer and take Ben out of the court. Yeah, this was a big thing because, uh, B Stinger, he did say that he was going to take Bambada to court and then he decided not to. But I was still, I was still, me personally, I was still rocking with Ronald Savage because I feel like victims are at, they have to be in their own space. That's how I think anyways. Victims have to be in their own space to do certain things because of the trauma, because we don't understand the outside looking in the trauma, but you know, the internet is the internet and the internet is savage. Internet doesn't listen to nobody. So that's just my two cents. Like we owe him something. He's doing the work, but we owe him something. We, we talking about we holding his feet to the fire. Well, we some self-righteous motherfuckers, ain't we? Yeah. See, we support CBA, Child Victims Act, Ronald Savage, Albany, suit and tie, looking good, dressed for success, lending his voice. But y'all around here talking about Ronald Savage like you talk about Hassan Campbell. Hassan Campbell ain't got done nothing but made money. He's a six-figure nigga. And this guy's laboring in obscurity, and you all talking about the nigga took a bag. Use a fucking lie. He ain't took no bag. We heard the video where the Zulu Nation was trying to offer Ronald a bag. Ronald said 50 grand. And them niggas was gonna give it to him. Ronald ain't take no bag. Ronald did the fucking work. And all you can do is come on YouTube and say, he abandoned the fight. Shut your mouth. As 10 toes down would say, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. This man ain't abandoned the fight. Just cause you don't see him on YouTube making video after video after video. He's doing the real work in the real streets. Yup. That's how people should be doing it. Motherfucker YouTube street. He's lending his voice for other causes too. Like Black Lives Matter. He's a real hero, y'all. I'm not going with the narrative that Star and other folks is trying to put out. Honestly, this is... This is... <laughs> I It's hard to say, but this is... Classic example of a tragic hero. Tragic hero. Who's on the light side, went to the dark side. Tragic hero story. Look up the term tragic hero. I would get into it now, but this is this is this is Ronald Savage, tragic hero. Man. I'm going with what my eyes see. I see Ronald Savage in Albany at the state capitol with a delegation to bring in the Child Victims Act. What more do you want? Just because the man chose not to take that final step, who are we that we should criticize his noble efforts of helping pass? The Child Victims Act by lending his face, his body, his voice, his presence to the Child Victims Act. I mean, we've seen how he turned up now, right? I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But nobody could imagine that Beastinger will go turncoat. All we can say is he abandoned the fight. Use a goddamn lie. He took a bag. Use a goddamn lie. Where is Hassan in this picture, Star? 
Brady Star, you gave that fuck nigga Hassan Campbell a plaque and called him the bravest man in hip hop. Now you two fuck niggas are warring against each other. You didn't label him the Bronx distraction. The nigga, you was sucking on his phallus for years. So this is another aspect of the infighting. Like there was so much infighting between platform and victim. It, it was insane. It was really insane. And this this is what I'm saying. All the infighting led to Bambada just slipping through the cracks. No one really paying attention to him. No one doing videos on him. But you have dozens of people doing videos on Ronald, dozens of people doing videos on Hassan, Star doing his videos, Sanader doing his videos. I mean, I didn't really break down this entire aspect completely, but this was what was going on during all these years. This is what was going on. You was riding for a song for years and talking mad reckless shit about this man here. Saying he abandoned the fight. I told you you've been trying to steer this fucking damn body narrative, but I'm tired of that shit, Star. I'm tired of you trying to steer the near narrative. Co-sign in the sign camel while you do Burger King fuck shit and curse people out fuck shit in bodegas and, and step back and then say, well, 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 Savage, well, where is he at? This is where he's at, fuck nigga, Star. This is where he's at. But you don't put this shit on your channel. You don't put this shit on your channel. You don't highlight the fact that he was there when they signed the bill into legislation. You don't want to highlight that, Star. Why? Because Hassan Campbell, the Bronx distraction, was your nigga. And now that nigga is shitting on you, Star. And you shitting on your distraction. You're walling. Both of you niggas is walling in the cesspool that you created. Both of you niggas, Star and Hassan, you're sitting on the same dung heap. If you don't know what dung is, it's doo-doo. Meanwhile... You fuck niggas in these YouTube streets are trying to say that this man took a fucking bag. That he's abandoned the fight. Shame on you niggas. Shame on you niggas. He put on a suit and tie. And got with the good white folks. See? New York State Capitol. The proof is in the pudding. We ain't got no pictures of Hassan Campbell. Star called that nigga the bravest man in hip hop. Stroked that nigga's phallus. Choked on that nigga's nutsack. For years. And never would highlight the fact that our dear brother Ronald Savage was doing the fucking work. That he was going to the state capital of New York and lending support to the Child Victims Act. He don't say that on his show. He don't say that on his show. He wants you to believe that Ronald took a bag and going on about his business and doing his little hip-hop stuff and got underage girls on TikTok. That's the narrative that Star is trying to create. But I'm here to say you a goddamn lie, Star. Don't worry, I won't use your likeness or your pictures or your words because I know you're a flagging motherfucker. So this uh, whole thing with the TikTok, I heard about the TikTok situation. I didn't look into it because I gave Ronald Savage the benefit of the doubt. But apparently there was a TikTok where he had young girls dancing for him for a video or something. Um, this was a big thing. This actually did happen. I don't know if they found out who the girls was. Um, I don't know how um I don't know how really all this really came about. Like to be honest, I just ignored this aspect because I thought dealing with everything, everything was already so crazy already. And plus I didn't want to muddy the waters or I didn't want to see the waters get muddied with this issue. I sure I I sort of ignored it because it was distracting to the central point of Africa Mimbara because you see everybody aiming at each other. It's like basically in one of those Western movies where people, everybody has a gun on everybody. Some people, two hands, you know, everybody has a gun on one person. So like if one person shoots, everybody gets shot. But the only person who has no gun on them is Africa Mimbara. That's exactly what was going on. Friend to none, I got you, loud and clear. Hip hop movement, he took his show on the road, sway in the morning, shade four five. Yep, all, he went these on are all tour. the things he's doing since he came out on Star's bullshit show. He went on tour. Even in the parade with Ch uh, Sharpton, National Action Network, representing for Al Sharpton's. No, I don't know. I don't know about Al Sharpton. <laughs> to be honest, this this would be a red flag, but. We'll continue. National Action Network. He's an activist, people. 
I said he's an activist. Y'all don't want to highlight the good things that this brother do. You want to say he's on TikTok with underage girls. Yeah, I mean, if Sherpton has an organization and there's uh, ways to work with that organization and help Black people in the community, then you can't really sh um, shit on Sharpton for that. I know a lot of people say whatever about Sharpton, but people really need to learn that there's organizations out there and organizations can be utilized, but you know, a lot of people don't really believe in organization, but that's a whole different topic. Who the fuck is painting that narrative? I want to know, and I want to know why they paint the narrative. I'm trying to make this man out to be something crazy. I'm not letting, I'm tired of that shit. See? They want to paint him. But he's out here with the media. Look at all the fucking media microphones. He's out there standing behind the media with my son. Where is Hassan Campbell? How come Star doesn't show this on his channel or highlight this? No, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but the way... I don't know if they just called caught Ronald in a moment, but just the way he's looking, seems like he's looking at the camera directly, right? He's not really paying attention to what's going on in front of him. I'm sure there was many cameras in the crowd in terms of press coverage, but uh, I don't know. This picture just seems different from the other pictures, if you ask me. Because Star is trying to direct a narrative. He's trying to prop up one nigga. He tried to prop up one nigga named Hassan Campbell. And the shit backfired in his face. He tried to prop up that nigga. Invite him out. Give that nigga awards. Call him the bravest man in hip hop. And the nigga didn't do shit. Now you didn't label him the Bronx distraction, huh? Hmm. I want to say he's taking a bag. But the brother's out there leaning his face. Leaning his face. Leaning his support. Leaning his physical. Leaning his body. No. No, you niggas got it wrong. I'm going to start calling you niggas names after this shit here. I'm only calling Star right now, but I'm going to start calling some of you fuck niggas on YouTube who be talking about he took a bag. He 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 disappeared. I'm going to start calling you out. See, front line of defense for Ronald B. Singer Savage. So I could say Ronald had at least one person that stood up for him. At least one person that stood up for him after... The firestorm. We'll just call it the firestorm. Or the shit star. Keep fucking with Ronald Z. You know I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Keep fucking with Ronald. Keep fucking with Ronald, okay? The shit's gonna get real personal. The shit's gonna get real personal. So he's making it a personal. He's making it personal. It's making it personal. I mean, that's that's all I really have to say. He's he's at this point, July thirtieth, twenty twenty one, decided to make it personal, and defend Ronald B. Stinger Savage. Let's go. Now, where is Hassan Campbell's work? Show me one thing that Hassan Campbell has done since he came out that relates to the Bambada story. You can't. Hassan doesn't fuck with the whole Bambada. Thing. He doesn't fuck with the Child Victims Act. He don't fuck with Black Lives Matter. He don't fuck with nothing. But look at Star. Look at that monstrunky ass nigga. Propped him up. The bravest man in hip hop. No, Star, no. The scariest man in hip hop. Now you can't name them the Bronx Distraction. You just now seeing that Hassan Campbell has been a distraction since he went left with his story. He'd been a distraction. He'd been a distraction. I'm tired of the narrative that people like Star and a lot of you fuck niggas in YouTube are trying to present when it relates to this brother, Ronald B. Stinger Savage. He ain't got to do the a August 14th deadline. He ain't got to go get a lawyer and take them by the court. His work speaks for itself. His legacy speaks for itself. So, brother Khalil Amani, he's he's going to get into a little bit about his history because you might be wondering... Why are we going through 20 minutes of some random guy defending Ronald B. Stinger Savage? So his history is very interesting, and it gives him a lot of authority to speak on this topic. A lot more authority than me, some random guy coming who's been watching, now commenting on this issue. But 
he's gonna get into his authority. Take that August 14th shit over to Hassan and talk that shit to him. No, Ronald Savage, he didn't create the Child Victims Act. But he went and got in with the team and went to Albany and stood behind the lawmakers and landed his voice to a worthy cause. We got Nerd Tubba holding his feet to the fire, holding Ronald Savage accountable. Look at you niggas. Look at you niggas. As someone who once had to stand up against a murderer and a pedophile, a cult leader named Yahweh Ben Yahweh, and the whole murderous cult against me, having to get on a witness stand with 15 goddamn defense attorneys and 15 mean mugging Yahweh members and the leader looking at me directly a mere 10 to 12 feet away from me in a mass trial. I know what it is to have to go in the courtroom and say, him did it right there and him did it right there. I know what it means to sit down with a lawyer and be debriefed and go over all of the particulars of, of, of the situation. So this is a witness to a famous case. Let me just pull it up here. Oh man, my spelling, my Hebrew spelling is horrible. Okay, it's it's not that bad off. Okay, so Yahweh bin Yahweh, he mentioned he had to stand trial. So this is a New York Times um reporting on his death or 2007. Okay, so Yahweh Ben Yahweh, who as a charismatic leader of a religious black separatist sect in the Miami area was convicted of conspiring to murder white people as an initiation rite, died on Monday night or early yesterday in Miami. He was 71. The cause was cancer. His lawyer, Jane said Yahweh Ben Yahweh wore a turban and flowing white robes and called himself the reincarnated Messiah had started successful business enterprises and worked to rehabilitate neighborhoods in the Liberty City section in Miami and elsewhere. The, the mayor of Miami declared October 7, 1990, Yahweh Ben Yahweh Day. Wow. But the next month, Yahweh Ben Yahweh and 12 followers were indicted on three counts of federal racketeering and extortion charges. The indictment charged 18 specific instances of racketeering that included 14 killings, two attempted killings, extortion, and arson. Let's see here. So this is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Trying to see if there's more information. So I had to find another article because the other article really didn't talk about the sexual abuse going on. But this one speaks on it more. Yahweh Ben Yahweh's Temple of Love, Love, Coding Messages and Missing Ears. This is from Local 10 Florida News. So, after he creates the Mother Church, the Temple of Yahweh Ben Yahweh is a colorful fixture. The Miami community, his disciples are familiar on the streets to dress like the leader in white robes and turbans. When not canvassing local neighborhoods, passing out literature and collecting money, the Yahweh's travel together in a fleet of buses emblazoned with the name Yahweh on the sides. Let me see here. Coded messages publicly at his temple of love. Yahweh, Yahweh teaches peace and morality. We love all moral men and I teach you to be moral. He tells his followers in a sermon entitled, What is the duty of the followers of Yahweh? 
To be blessed, you must be ethical, and the definition of ethics is a system of moral principle. A system means an order, a method, a truthful math mathematical sequential fact. Ethics deals with the rules of conduct that all civilized people of the earth recognize. But Amani says that the spiritual leader's preachings contain scripted messages that are understood by members of the nation of Yahweh. Yahweh ben Yahweh used a coded word, he says. He used a code word, Azazel, which in Hebrew means scapegoat. And he basically taught that in our own land, we'd have these goats that we'd bring once a year and kill them for the sins of Israel. But he took it further and he said, white people are the new goats. And he said that proof of a kill is to bring back the head of Azazel. And we knew that Azazel was not a goat because we weren't in our land with goats. The Azazel was the white man. So Road Rug says they were concerned about someone possibly coming to kill her. So they assigned uniformed police officers to sand guard outside of her hospital room. When she was able to speak with us, we interviewed her, but she couldn't remember what anyone looked like, he says. They were wearing masks, but we knew it came out of the temple. Roderick says Banks did give the information about what was going on behind closed doors at the Temple of Love. Banks told the detective that there was sexual abuse, possibly of young girls, inside the Temple of Holan Mitchell. The indoctrination, the tapes, the media stuff that he would hand out to his followers, preaching the hatred of white men. We were trying to grab everything we could about him and we and and what he was espousing at the time we tried to build a case we tried to get a search warrant we did get into the temple with some building inspectors but holland mitchell and his cronies weren't cooperating or take or talking or anything so this is a big case and this is what he's referring to so we're going to continue on. And then get on the stand and hold your hand up and swear to tell the truth on the Bible. I just, I did some great snitching back in the day. Nah, no, Star, you ain't snitch like I snitched. I did some, some heroic snitching back in the day. Some noteworthy snitching back in the day. Some snitching that I'm going to go to my grave proud of the motherfucker that I did. I'm just using your street language snitch. You all want Ronald Savage to get a lawyer, go through the whole debriefing process, get on the stand, face his accuser, or face his, his, his uh, abuser, not accuser, face his abuser, face the entire Zulu nation who's behind Africa about it. You guys out there have no clue of the pressure and fear that goes into going to court and getting on the stand when you can look out in the room and see many of your enemies. He has a fair point. I mean, he was coming in against uh, murderers, right? So he was in a position, a very heavy position, to say the least. And he is defending Ronald Savage. Many of your enemies, you have no clue of the courage involved in court proceedings. You have no clue what Ronald Savage has been through and is going through. Ronald Savage has several ailments, infirmities. He has Tourette syndrome, you know, ticks. He's got Tourette syndrome. He suffered from depression. And it's probably some other shit. He just, I think he had high blood and was in the hospital for a while too. Physical shit, physical ailments. And all you can say is, we gonna hold Ronald Savage's feet to the fire. And he's accountable. Let me tell you something, fuck niggas. He is not accountable. To none of you niggas. What happened between him and African Nevada, he made public. But the reality is, it is a private situation. It is his right to go as far as he wants and to stop when he wants. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'll leave it at that. I think I played enough. Right, so I'm going to get into what's going on now. September 24th, 2022 how things can change. So this is another video. Now in response to everything Ronald Savage has said, Ronald Savage has tried to claim that DJ K Slay, rest in peace, was not here anymore 
try to take back a story about Africa Bambata, about him getting stabbed. Now, this is this was a big story. I think it was 2014, I believe. This was before anybody came out that African Bambata was in the hospital. The Zulu nation said that he was in the hospital for chest pains, but the chest pains were a stabbing. And that stabbing occurred because Bambata, he uh he did the he did the Bill Cosby, did a little slip in the drink on a boy. The boy passed out. The boy woke up to Bambata performing um fellatio on him. And then the boy got to the poking because he didn't like that. So that was a big story. That was, you could say that was um, a story outing Ben Bottom because there was rumors for years about him being gay. So Ronald Savage tried to take back a story from a dead man or try to recant for a man who cannot speak for himself. And so that's the extent that Ronald has gone. And f now we have Khalil Omani now rescinding his defense. The last line of defense for Ronald Savage has rescinded. So this is why I did this video because I seen, I shown you the ferocity and passion this man had to defend Ronald Savage. And now Ronald Savage doesn't have many people in this corner except for African Bimbada, the one, the very one that abused him. So let's go. I'm not going to play the whole video. Right. Go through the window, by the window. That is where I'll be, come tiptoe through the tulips with me. Tulips with me. Tiptoe through the tulips. allegedly in 2013. Oh, so I started this uh, show off with Tiny Tim's Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Why did I choose that song, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, by Tiny Tim? Because it exemplifies everything that we see Ronald B. Stinger Savage trying to do. He's trying to tiptoe through the tulips. He's trying to bypass the Bambada conversation. Oh, yes, he is. So even he can recognize what's going on now, even after his first defense. Oh, my goodness. We got to talk about it. I, I, I've never seen. I've never seen such tiptoeing through the tulips. I've never seen such backtracking in my life. I have never seen such wishy-washy straddling the fence, flip-flopping in my life. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. That's right. Take a little bit of tea here. Oh, my goodness. 
Ronald Savage, Ronald Savage, Ronald Savage. Your last name is kind of apropos, Savage, because this is some savage shit you're trying to pull off. You have got Bambada's name so far up the crack of your ass that you can't even call him Bambada no more. It's A.B. Hey, A.B. Hey, A.B. Yeah, it's very strange that uh, Ronald's now calling him A.B. Like a nickname, so it just shows the closeness of them, I guess. Very strange, very strange, to say the least. I've lost all respect for you, Ronald. I've lost all respect for your so-called diagnoses. There you go. He said he lost all respect for him. You walk around here trying to make a New York slang like, you know what I'm saying? You trying to talk about and say, that's some goddamn ticks, some Tourette's. Because you like to say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excuse me. Now Tourette's <clears throat> has a new phrase in its ideology. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Let me slow down. Before I get a stroke like Israel Doctor. But those of you who've been following Ronald Savage as of late, you got to know this nigga is tiptoeing through the tulips. That either he took a bag, that Bambada and the Zulu Nation have gotten to his ass. For, for certainty, we see that Ronald B. Stinger Savage has no friends outside of the Zulu Nation. So I understand why he's trying to whitewash, <clears throat> why he's trying to scrub the internets clean of the Bambada conversation. He even had fuck niggas like Israel, Izzy Doctor, backtracking, backing up, and moonwalking, and being complimentary and placating Beastinger. Wow. <laughs> I never thought I would see the day where Israel Doctor would back down from the bam by the conversation. But this nigga, I'm talking about Ronald Beastinger Savage, even has a guy like Izzy backing down and soft peddling and placating his message of what happened to that boy. For indeed, Ronald B. Stinger Savage has Izzy Israel Doctor saying, what happened to that person? <laughs> that Ronald Savage went over to Izzy's channel and told him, don't you say what happened to that boy no more. Because we don't know if it was a boy, you know, our people say, you know, Yo, yeah, that boy was bad, that boy's a bad, that boy bad, you know, mean, you know, it mean like a man, like a boy, you know. And Izzy fell for it. That Ronald B. Stinger Savage actually made Izzy's three-year-old What Happened to That Boy movement come to a roaring halt. He took it from What Happened to That Boy to What Happened to That Person. And Ronald went on Izzy's channel. And Izzy gave Ronald the red carpet, although as though he was President Obama. Meanwhile, a few days before, when that fuck nigga DJ Black Ass Charm was on his show, Izzy told him to shut up. We, we gonna do a video about that too. Izzy said, shut up, because you're gonna make me disrespect you, Black Charm. You need to change your conversation. It's all right, don't push me. But when this nigga, Ronald B. Stinger Savage came over to Izzy's channel, Izzy took a back seat and said, it's your show, nigga. Oh, you don't want me to say what happened to that boy? Okay, we'll say what happened to that person. Israel Doctrine bowed down, y'all. Can you believe that? Oh, Israel Doctrine was afraid to engage in some serious discussion. You know why? Now, Israel Doctrine, he's another uh, YouTube creator. I haven't seen much of his content, to be honest. Really well, I can say I haven't seen any of his content, but um, yeah, apparently Ronald was on his platform and um, had him backtracking on some of his own words, what happened to that boy in relation to what Africa Bambada did to Ronald Savage. Because Izzy says that Ronald is his friend. So as his friend, he placated him. But I'm sure by now. And this is a problem. Um, being friends with Ronald Savage. If you're Ronald Savage's friend, you happen to be come across this video. Please take Ronald Savage's phone, get him off the internet, keep him off the internet. If you think you're his friend, please, because this 180, even friends of Ronald Savage have to see this 180 that happened. Izzy is starting to say, oh shit, I'm gonna have to go at Ronald. Because Ronald was fucking with my movement. Ronald just took the B off of what happened to that boy and put a P on it. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic that Izzy Israel Doctrine was trying to go LGBTQ and add a P, as in pedophile, to the gay rights movement 
And here comes Ronald B. Sting Savage, who adds a P, who snatched a P from the LGBTQ P that Izzy was trying to take. He snatched that P and took it from pedophile. I'm gonna put it over here on the What Happened to That Boy movie and took the B off and put it on the P and made What Happened to That Person. I'll have to say, I mean, the way Khalil Omani gets his message across, he's a very allegorical type of guy. Ronald Snatch is his P. He snatches what happened to that boy and put a pee on what happened to that person. Ronald even made Izzy stop. Uh, what'd he do? It'll come back to me. He did a lot. Ronald did a lot. I was sitting there like, my God. Ronald got the juice. Ronald got the juice. Yes, he did. So now Ronald was saying that here, here's Ron's, you know, it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater because. Hassan Campbell so psychologically fucked up Ronald's mind. He's, his whole thing is, I don't believe shit, so fuck, so, so fuck all that. The DJ K. Slay and Khalil Amani narrative, fuck that. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. That's his... That's what he's saying. We know that that's bullshit. We know that there's a deeper, sinister plot going on between Ronald B. Stinger Savage and the Zulu Nation and Africa Bimbala. Not only is Ronald B. Stinger Savage trying to expunge AB, AB, African Babata from the shit that he did to him. He's also trying to expunge the culpability and the complicity of the Zulu nation. Because as I said just a minute ago, Ronald B. Stinger Savage, he has no friends outside of the Zulu nation. So he, he, he's, he's, like a, he's like a dog going back to his own vomit. You ever seen a dog that's, that, that be out there in the middle of the street, you know, a stray dog with a mange, his hair's falling off him, and the dog, you can see the dog's bones, and then you see the dog start vomiting. <laughs> And the dog vomits. And then the dog looks at, at its own vomit and begins to lap it up like food because he's hungry. I think the Bible even has a scripture about a dog returning to his own vomit. That's what Ronald Savage is doing. He's a dog who has returned to his own vomit. So I'll just leave it at there. Like I said, very allegorical guy. So, I mean, I went through a lot. The then and now, July 30th, 2021 to September 24th, 2022. So much has changed. A lot of decisions has been made by Ronald Savage. But that's basically it for this video.